Welcome to Hacks Be Shed. This is the last in a series of three videos about fitting a spindle bearing oil system to my Harrison 140 leg. I'll give you a quick recap. The whole thing came about because I realised that my spindle bearings were getting very hot at high speed and I thought that they'd been over adjusted too tight. So I think it's in video 49, I took the lid off and adjusted those bearings and that solved that problem. But as the lid was off, I thought it might be an idea to make a transparent cover so I could then watch what was going on over a period of weeks or so. I did that and I realised that when the gearbox is on the low range speed, over there, no oil gets onto the shelf at the front here to lubricate the spindle bearings. So in videos 59 and 60, I made the oil assistant. And it works okay, but the pump has some problems. Uh, it's not continuously rated and it's quite noisy. So a new pump has arrived, I'm going to fit that now and finish the project. There's the little pump there, sitting just under those gears and it's tucked away nicely. The feed pipe up to the head is PVC tubing and when I'm happy with everything I might well make that copper. I'll quickly show you what the problem is again. When I run the lathe on the lower range no oil gets onto this ledge which means no oil goes to the spindle bearings. That was the top of the lower range, which is 120 RPM. When I start the pump, it'll run for 30 seconds and then stop, and I'll show you the flow to the spindle bearings now. The new pump is a peristaltic pump, and basically, a number of rollers push the fluid around a silicon tube. The one I bought was £8.50. Let's put it on. So it is continuously rated, but it doesn't have a very high flow. It isn't much more than a dribble, really. But it is exceptionally quiet. My homemade manifold has three pipes coming off it. This one to feed the front spindle bearing, the middle one to feed the back spindle bearing, and this one going off there to feed the bearing on the end of the power input shaft. Now, the current pump has quite a high flow rate. I didn't balance the output from these three pipes. If I'm using the peristaltic pump with a very low flow rate, it's possible I get flow on the back pipe here and nothing on the front pipes. So I'm going to have to get this lid off and then set it up with the existing pump and check that I've got equal flows and I may need to crimp the end of the pipes here to get equal flow across all three pipes. Okay, here's the test rig. Feed pipe coming in to the end of this transparent lid. You can see the three copper pipes which distribute the oil within the head and under each of those copper pipes I've got a jar. If I turn it on for a period of time I should be able to see how much oil is collected in each of those three plastic cup jar things. There's every possibility that oil is going to shoot everywhere and I'll just end up with a terrible mess. But let's give it a go. Oh, fiddle. All right. So the important thing is there's only a dribble coming out of that one. There's far more coming out of these two. In fact, this middle one is the uh, fastest flow. Hang on, turn it off. I mean, even though this lost quite a bit of fluid. Oh yeah, look, look. I'll take the lid off so you can see properly. You can see the results pretty clearly. This cup is almost full. This cup is half full but some was spilt. None was spilt around this cup, but you can see there's barely any flow. And that's the flow to the spindle bearing at the front. So I'm going to have to nip up this pipe and this pipe a bit to try and get more flow to this end and try and balance the whole thing out. It's 
quite interesting really. So I've knit the ends of this pipe and this middle pipe and let's just give it a try now. Oh, oh. I'm gradually nipping the ends of these pipes, these two, and repeating the test. The only thing that's certain about this is that I'm going to make a horrible mess, which I am, all over the place. Let's give it another go. Well, you can see, this cup is still by far collecting the most oil. And that one needs to be nipped almost shut, I think. Anyway, I'll keep doing it. Well, we're getting much closer to a balanced look. There's not that much difference between these two, and this cup's now half full. So this pipe is going to have to be nipped almost closed completely, I think, for this to work. Getting quite close now, these two are balanced. So I need to clamp these two down a little bit more so that this one fills quicker. This may be it. Now what do you think? That is pretty close. There's still a fraction less in this feed to the uh, front spindle bearing. But I've crimped these two so much now, they're almost completely closed. I believe this will be the final, final test. The oil's going into every cup without spilling. So, these two are about equal, this one's a bit less. This is the back input shaft bearing. I don't think that matters too much. I think that could do. Now I've rigged up the peristaltic pump. It may just be too feeble, but these bearings don't need a lot of oil. Do you know, that might be all right. We'll leave it running for a good while. That pump is so incredibly quiet. I almost have to talk in whispers. The cups are full after about five minutes. So now I'm happy that the pipes are balanced. I can move this manifold over to the aluminium lead and refit that. And then it's just a case of deciding which pump to put on. You can see how much I had to crimp at the end of that pipe. And the long pipe that goes to the front spindle bearing is completely open, not crimped in the slightest. It was a very interesting schoolboy experiment, I thought. It took me back to uh, class 11 science. One final test with a transparent lid, now that the pipes are balanced with the gear pump. We'll see how much oil we get out of this front nozzle here. bit hard to tell but it must be quite a bit more than it was. I've just tried this lid on to make sure the pipes are still bent into the right places which they are so I can unfasten this now. I did have a look to see how long a tube in a peristaltic pump should last and uh, I saw 10,000 hours but those are for the proper ones I don't know about the eBay ones probably 10,000 minutes <laughs> But I only use the lathe a couple of times a week, maybe for an hour or two. I think it would last a long time. And if it did leak, well, all you have to do is change the silicon pipe. You don't have to change the motor. And if it leaked, the oil would just run out onto the floor and I would see it before the gearbox ran dry. I'm certain of that. Looks weird, doesn't it? like some kind of deranged octopus. I'll just put some silicon round that 
There's no pressure on this, it's above the oil line obviously. The thing about the gear pump is, there's a lot more flow and more pressure. And therefore out of these you actually get a jet of oil. And with the peristaltic pump it's only a dribble. So that's something I need to think about. At last, I've been waiting weeks to uh, put that into there. Ready to fit. Well, I think that just about brings us to the end of the story. The aluminium lid is back on. I'm pleased to see that. Sometime soon, I'll decide which pump to fit. When I've got some spare time, I'll probably make this off into copper, this feed into the head here. Um, I found it longer than I'd planned, quite frustrating at times, but other times, when we were doing that oil feed experiment, I really quite enjoyed it in a way. So I hope that was useful to you. Thank you for watching Hacksby Shed.